The reason they're called non-precision is because there is no electronic vertical guidance, as on an ILS. But properly flown, a non-precision approach can be done with as little risk as a precision approach, like an ILS. Because a non-precision approach doesn't provide vertical guidance, the requirement on the pilot blips up a bit. The pilot has to follow the procedure on the chart up to the point where the runway is in sight. From that point on, a non-precision approach is scud running. That, though, is not as bad as it sounds. If you can see the runway and can fly a normal approach to the runway, the arrival is orderly and with some organization. What problems do pilots have with non-precision approaches? Premature arrivals are a common problem, that is, arriving at the ground before you get to the runway. Let's examine every element of a non-precision approach to develop some ideas on how to stay out of trouble. The first thing that we have to consider is the weather. We can always say that weather shouldn't make an approach any riskier, but that may well be a form of self-delusion because of the human element. The minimum descent altitude is clearly defined on the approach chart. And if we're good little boys and don't go below that altitude until or unless the runway is in sight and we're in a position to make a normal approach and landing, then it's true that the weather shouldn't have anything to do with risk. However, the temptation to go a little lower is always there. And the risk that flies with that temptation is something that only the individual can remove from a given flight. In this sense, any instrument approach must be flown with the goal to follow the procedure to the letter and then to land only if all the conditions are met. Before going on, let's get some terminology straight. When talking about minimums for non-precision approaches, we have both a minimum descent altitude and a minimum descent height. The altitude is what you see on your altimeter. The height is the number of feet you are above the touchdown zone when flying at the minimum descent altitude. The minimum descent height would directly relate to the reported ceiling. 